So here on MAGFest 1, and MAGFest 1 was apparently cool. I don't know. I wasn't there, but wasn't a big deal. There was like 250 people or something, and he had other shit going on in his life. So he was just like, all right, that was cool. I'm out. Uh, Brendan, who attended MAGFest 1, heard that and was like, no, 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 let me run it. I'm a, I want to do it. And so Joe handed MAGFest off to Brendan, and I made it to MAGFest 2, and then uh, I started getting involved with MAGFest 4, and eventually became, you know, the guy running MAGFest for around MAGFest 6 to 10, and then I pulled this guy in, and then, you know, around MAGFest 10, he was the guy running MAGFest. So that's who we are. I'm Paul. He's Paul. You're all Paul. My name is Dom. He's Dom. There it is. He's Buff Stud Horse. That's true. That is actually true. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just uh, clearing off my laptop for consumption. This would be number 15. Uh, two years ago, we gave up on the numbers because it, it happens on year 17, and all the lead up and preparation is year 16, and the number is year 15, and it was just confusing as hell. And we got tired of like having to correct people with the, you know, no, wait, it's that year, but this is the number of it. And we're just like, okay, this is now MAGFest 2017, but this is number 15. Um, we've been at the Gaylord since 10. That was our first year here. Uh, and whatever, let's see, basic MAGFest sort of history and numbers since I'm going through that while Dom plugs things. Um, we've grown about 50% every year average uh, until last year we hit about 20,000. And Dom, do you know what the numbers are so far this year? We can look. Um, I think oh yeah, you can call it up. 19 checked in. Yeah. Oh, check you out. This is apparently water, so. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I'm, I'm Steph. Steph Raider. Nice to meet you. We should oh. probably get you a microphone for. Oh, was someone else sitting here? Nope. Uh, is Nick coming? Or is anybody else coming? Nobody knows what's going on here. Nope. <laughs> this, this is a pretty regular. Yeah, just have a, have a seat with a microphone. Yep. And then we he can have a microphone if he wants. He can, you know. I can share. Just, just like, funk. And <laughs> wow, presentation? Uh, no, not really. I was, I was like, phew. <laughs> you more. know, play some Minecraft or something. You should, you should move over one and, and share, this, share this thing. We can cuddle a little. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm Steph. Uh, I'm David. <clears throat> right. I'm, I'm, I'm Division Director of Programming. I am uh, the bookkeeper. I am head of guests. And uh, I made guidebook. It's a lot. <laughs> she, she didn't like program guidebook herself. Oh, <laughs> she, no, sorry. I she, input all the, I, cl uh, yeah. I collect all the information and I get it into the proper format and then I upload it and organize it and I organize. That's what I do. Thanks, hi. It's so weird, huh? No, I'm glad. I'm glad. It's like, well, we have like 18,000 people right now or ish or something, and, and uh, I could, I should check. Yeah, I don't know. He was saying 19 something. 19, yeah. It's, it's not, every, not everybody to downloads it, though. Only like half the people download it. Yeah. And I'm hoping, where is the sheet? Oh! <gasps> I brought them in here. <gasps> so there's supposed to be sheets at the, at the front of all the, the panel rooms so that they can, so that the panelists will say, hey, by the way, there's a feedback section in the guidebook. Fill that out. We need that. It's before we'll have like, you know, 20,000 people and like I get 86 people filling that out. I'm like, this is, I, I took marketing, market research in college and this is not how we answer questions with 20,000 people and 86 answers. <laughs> like, ah. And they're not even all, you know, filled out. Anything. 
Cool. Hi, there. I filled Hi. in the time. All I right. filled it in. Here you go. No, Sorry, no. I was... Don't. Yeah. Stop what? Uh, what? Chris. What? Chris. Uh, Hi, I'm Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, didn't mean I to... do stuff in the console room. I make a lot of magic happen, and I've gotten way too involved with MagFest way too fast. <laughs> Wait, how One long, of how us. Long, uh, how long have you been with us? Two years. Really? Yeah. That's <laughs> terrible. Wait, did he you attend your first end, one, guys. or did you just start staffing? <laughs> I attended the first one. Okay. All right. That's fine. Staffed directly. You're, you're good then. I thought I thought you'd been around longer. No. But wow, <laughs> two years. No, he was. Jeez. You came from. Um, the other one in Charlottesville. Yes. What was it called? I'm sorry. Omegacon. Omegacon, I'm a dope. He came from Omegacon. It's pretty, pretty, pretty killer. So, all right, cool. cool. Panel's over. Anybody got any questions? That's great. <laughs> that was our presentation. And Who wants there it to know is. actually how MAGFest works? Um, so, all right, here's the deal. Duct tape. Uh, I, Shoestring. I had not actually realized that this panel was approved till about an hour ago. What? We just throw it on. There, man. <laughs> you do so it, that's fun. I can sit up here and talk about Magfest all day, though. So that's totally yeah. cool. Um, I don't know. What should we talk? We probably should talk about this. All right. Oh. <clears throat> this Magfest is right here, basically very close to sold out. Um, we think maybe this year we had a little bit of the snow issues that are causing some of the the outdoor stuff. But we're sitting right around. I think like what nineteen thousand checked in, something like that. Yeah. Um, it was how many was it last year? Twenty two. It was like twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was about twenty two thousand checked in people. And that last includes year. staff and guests and VIPs and whatever. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so yeah, this one's here. Uh, we've been to the Gaylord for a couple of years. Uh, it started down in Charlottesville, Virginia, uh, and then kind of moved northward over the years till we got to. It uh, started in Roanoke, but you wait. Know. Oh, did oh, jeez. He's sitting right there. Party foul. Hi, Joe. Yeah. We did Good just, yeah. It didn't even get to Charlottesville <laughs> till the fourth year. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't go to number, till number five. Dom only so. came in in the fifth year, so he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's true, that's true. My first was the four. I wrote um, a driver that's in Linux to this day that actually um, lets DDR pads work um, because there was a, they were treating the buttons as axes, so you couldn't press both but left and right at the same time. And then I emailed everybody that was working on DDR projects at the time, and one of them was Brendan Becker. <laughs> who was working on Pi DDR, <laughs> And that, that's how I found out about MacFest. It was from him and my keyboard player of my band, uh, Rare Candy. And then they, on the same day, were like, hey, if you heard of this, you know, MacFest, you should go to it. And whenever I hear two things on the same time at the same time, I have to do it. And then I went to five, staff six, and have been around for a while. So um, yeah, so, so yeah, sorry, I didn't know about Roanoke. Don, Don um, created right, Jam so, Space. So yeah, yeah I have, that, to, I have to follow was, his anecdote <laughs> with, his baby. with mine. He attended MAGFest 5 and just like set a keyboard in a hallway and put a little sign on it that was like, play me. And then after 5, he emailed us and was like, hey, I've got this idea for like a jam space oh. where we just like put a bunch of instruments in a room and let everybody jam out. And we had already been talking about something like that. So I was like, okay, I got I to gotta take a look and, and see who this guy is. And I went and I looked at his webpage. And on his webpage, I found documentation for a hacking tool for the Super Nintendo that had me in the credits <laughs> from like 1995 or something and I was just like all right this guy's cool <laughs> and we brought him in and what was he that, ran the Yoshi doc What's that? the Yoshi doc yeah the Yoshi doc yeah, that was so what crazy. was that that was like a disassembler for the was, SNES no it was like all the um memory oh, it was just like the it was like the memory map yeah right yeah memory map or whatever yeah it was like reverse engineered system documentation for the Super Nintendo. Yep, yep. And like in the early 90s, I was hacking the Super Nintendo and I helped that guy with his reverse engineering and ended up in the credits for his doc. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, yeah, all right. So like basically MAGFest has been growing this event for this is number 15. Uh, it's been going, going through uh, a whole bunch of different iterations. Um, it's been for, for a long time. We were over at the Hilton Mark Center, um, which um, is where we're doing Mag Labs uh, currently, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so we were there for about four years. We came here. This is like our what, fifth year at the Gaylord? The sixth year? 10, oh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. God. Years. Holy crap. Really? I, Jeez. I can't. It seems That's like crazy. just yesterday. <laughs> it all starts to blur together. <laughs> all right. Uh, you got to count the one. Just for fun, because I'm curious, who here has been to a MagFest event at the Mark Center? Yeah. That's pretty yeah, good. A oh, fair oh, amount. Yeah. Jay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's my head autographs back there. Hey. Yeah, who here <laughs> runs the autographs department? There you go. <laughs> Good job. Nice. Good job. <laughs> we have questions for you later. It's going to be great. That's this panel. <laughs> <laughs> All 
You got any more, Paul, or it's just you? Okay, that's good. Just who runs autographs and who's been to the Mark Center. It's good. Okay. (laughs) We're really tired. (laughs) It's been a long, long couple of days. Okay, so the way MAGFest works is it's like a a train that's on fire. (laughs) And just we just keep trying to run it faster. And the faster we run it, the bigger the fire gets. And like once upon a time, there was a whole bunch of people who were like, there's video games on that train. And it's on fire. That's awesome. <laughs> Let's go. I want to throw chemicals on the fire so it's like, you know, it's and now, mercury or something. Like, and we've gotten the flames, fire sort flame, of contained. Blue flames, so it's like, like only in the engine under the train, maybe. And a whole bunch of people are like, cool, they've got video games on that train. They hang around. And there's a, and there's a bunch of people who were like, aw, this train used to be on fire. <laughs> I liked it that way. This is, this is a perfect metaphor. <laughs> I, it really is. <laughs> uh, so that's sort of the overview of how MAGFest works. Right, the general, you know, the general form. That's the big picture. It's um, yeah, all right. So I guess we could talk about two, two sort of different large-scale things. One is, like, this event, uh, and then the other is, like, some of the moves we're trying to make with uh, expansion and, and the other events. Um, I guess let's, let's talk about the... Real quick, okay, let's talk about the, like, uh, the other events and stuff and how they fit into what's, what's going on. So this event has been growing for a long time. We're coming up on year 15. Uh, we are mostly through year 15. Um, and uh, basically, this is as big as it's basically going to be able to get at the Gaylord. We have every last square inch of space. Um, as soon as we learned they were building that new ballroom out there, we were like, give it to us. We want it. We, we need it. Yeah, like they have this. Uh, keep getting bigger. We, we're like, how many how many closets do you have? Because we'll take those. Thanks. Uh, and I mean, suite. no, yeah, the no. Seriously, they have a little like bridal suite. Like if you're having a wedding, you have this nice thing with it. We're like, we want that. <laughs> we're gonna put like snacks in there. It's gonna be great. It's <laughs> like mats on the floor for people to like crash and stuff. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, we do that with like everything. We're just like every last square inch of space here. And uh, for all, we, we're signed up for a number of years through here in the future. Um, and basically, um, you know, every contract is just like, if, if you have space, it is our space. <laughs> Give it to us. Um, so, okay, as MagFest gets bigger here, right, you, like this is a year we were basically either going to sell out or we were like super, super close, which we are. Um, and in future years, we're undoubtedly going to be sold out here. Um, especially because National Harbor's opening new hotels and new parking lots and all kinds of stuff like that, which is always good stuff. Um, yeah, the casino, yeah. Yeah, the casino is an interesting variable in this equation. That just opened up just like weeks ago, and uh, we're still you know, going to see how that kind of fits into the MAGFest equation. I hate um, gambling, just by the way. I heard, I heard they have a boxing arena or something. And the attendees already have no money when they leave here. Like, they, the, they're just going to be in debt. Well, the, like we, the big thing that I want out of the casino is their parking garage. <laughs> They got so many parking spaces. Well, they don't need the parking garage. We just claim it. Yeah. I just want to see, like, the proto men in a boxing ring do a concert or something. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I would I'd be down for that. Um, Will they all fit yeah, in there? They're into this, I'm There's sure. There's ten of them with all this. Although yeah, they we'll, have to be we'll suspended, obviously, really? by wires and, and flying like around ring. the, you know. Um, okay, so the bottom line is, basically question is, why don't we move to a bigger venue? Um, the answer are, are basically all the bigger venues are convention centers. Um, they're further away from here. Um, they have problems with hotels being attached. They have problems with parking and all kinds of stuff like that. You can't really run 24 hours a day. It's sort of not... You can if you want to... None of these are the real problem, Dom. Yeah. Tell what them the real problem. The real problem is all these factors kind of combine together to diminish the vibe of MAGFest. Um, and basically, we're not willing to sacrifice that for anything. Um, and basically... The real problem is, we were sitting on the floor at Nerdapalooza uh, four years ago. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, you know. And we were like, huh, we want to catch the band in an hour, but right now we're bored. Our hotel isn't like a mile away. If we catch a shuttle bus back there, we got about five minutes to eat the sandwich that's in the fridge, and then we got to get on a shuttle bus again to get back here to catch the band. And it hit us both at the same time, and we were like, this is what MAGFest looks like in a convention center. We can't do that. Let's never do that. It's, it, it's got to be home, you know? Yep, yep. 
And so, okay, so if we're staying here, um, which, is, which is the sort of decision, um, then basically that, that means that we're at 20,000 people and that's as, as big as we can get out here. Um, but we're ambitious and we like to light our trains on fire as often as possible. Um, so basically, how do, we, how do we continue growth of MAGFest, the, the organization, uh, with the main event kind of capped out? And, and the answer we're, we're working on, um, we're trying out for size, is uh, more events. Um, so over the years, um, we've been doing, uh, basically we've been trying to do an event in a different city. Um, and this year, for the first time, I can actually announce that we are doing Meg West uh, this year, August. Uh, yeah, August 25th to the 28th. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a, that's- We that's, got a Mag West guy in the back there. Where we got? Yeah. Hi, Ryan. Ryan. Oh, give us, right. give us a hand in the air, come on. He's going to oh, be coy man, about plain, it. Plain <laughs> that's fine. That's how MAGFest works, right, right here. Um, yeah, so that's really cool, and we've been working on that for a couple of years. So the question is like, all right, what kind of things can you do to, to practice for that? Um, so there's some variables we're not going to be able to get super huge amounts of practice for, like what if we need to get our warehouse to the West Coast? Like, how does that work? Um, what if we need to have storage out there, that kind of thing? Um, so for, for a couple of years, we've actually been running smaller events out there on the West Coast. Um, and... Uh, beyond that, we've also um, we're trying. We were trying to answer the question of like, can the organization even handle two events per year? Um, and that was sort of the original impetus between before like Magfest 8.5 and uh, Mag Labs and Mag Classic, um, and and basically those events um, were originally intended as sort of practice runs for the West Coast, and also kind of an excuse to go back to our old venue and throw a party over there too, and you know do a little miniature version of Magfest. Um, and funny story, actually unrelated to this, was that we were signed up for three years to do that, and then basically we, the original plan was when we did Meg West, uh, the year that we did that, we, weren't, we were not going to do um, another ev a fall event, a smaller fall event, except the last one was totally awesome. Like, who, who's at Meg Labs, by any chance? Anybody? All right, we had a bunch of folks out there. It was so awesome that all of our staffers were like, we have to do it again. It was yeah. so cool. We figured out how to do it, and it was super experimental, and they, they really, we put new people in charge of it to just, like, go nuts, and they were the research team. It was their name. They did, like, a whole science theme, and just really, like, we, we took every single department. We put new people in charge just to be like, here, here's the Voltron sort of MAGFest. Like, what can you do with this? And, uh, and it was awesome. It was a totally great event. I'm going to, uh, like, because yeah. I always do the philosophical angle sure. on these things. Uh, uh, like I mentioned, half the stuff that ends up good at MAGFest is completely by accident. We just, we fumble our way through and something happens and everybody's like, wait, that was actually awesome. Let's do some more of that. And when we, uh, we did 8.5 and then Classic and everything, we were like, okay, these are experimental things. And after Classic, we were just like scratching our heads like, do we really want to do this again? Was it worth it? Because we actually lost money on it. But the point of it was to sort of do staff training and, and experiment with things and whatever. And my point, like immediately after Classic, I was just like, okay, if we do this again, it's got to be crazy. Like just fucking crazy. We've got to go nuts with it and be completely experimental. And we, we sort of rolled around and tried to figure out like what that would look like. And what we came up with was Mag Labs. And we like... We just completely screwed with the infrastructure of the event and just, you know, replaced half the people that were in charge of anything and, and, and mixed up everything. And I was deliberately trying to create accidents because, you know, all these accidents create great things at MAGFest. So how do you do that? Well, you just experiment and just like fling shit on the wall and see what sticks. And so I kind of tr like set out trying to make an event that was going to be a failure. <laughs> I consider it a failure because it was not a failure. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate. So yeah, so we're doing Mag Labs again. Uh, and that's going to be... I failed. We're doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> Our staff wouldn't let us not do Mag Labs, so we were like, all right, screw it. We're just going to do it. Uh, it is one week after Mag West, uh, which is the only dates available in 2017. Which is I'm incredible. totally into doing them on the same dates. <laughs> I can't. Like, oh my god! No. no. All right, all right. No, no. we're not going to do it. But right. I'm just going to say: imagine if there were two I simultaneous mean, Magfest cool. events happening on two different coasts, and we linked them up 
in every way possible. So all the tournaments were like East Coast versus West Coast. And we have like a portal room that's just like a screen and a camera where people can be like, hey, California, what's up? Yeah, and California would have the blue portal and the, you know, we, East Coast no, we would have We need actual portals so we can just jump to the other convention whenever we want. We have um, our best we're scientists gonna, We can put Charles Lohr in charge of that. Yep. We actually do have a, somebody with a PhD in physics, and they're so working on that. In the future, we might do that, by the way. Right. That's a, that's a, a real thing. Yeah. How much would the membership cost go up to that? Well, you just have to pay like 10 bucks every time you jump through the portal. That's how we... <laughs> yeah. It's a donation. I mean, we just get a portal We're gun and call it a day. Okay. Like, and I'm talking about a Rick and Morty portal gun, not, a, no, I mean, not the, an aperture science portal gun. The cost would be normal. The, co the cost of the teleporter is just, you know, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I'm just going to get the Hyperloop. That's fine. It's no problem. It's cool. If anybody knows Elon Musk, please invite him to MAGFest. I'm serious. <laughs> I am so serious. All right. Just putting that out there. <clears throat> yeah, so, so we're doing that one week after, which is ridiculous. So we're Mag West and then probably hopping on a plane and then coming back to do uh, Mag Labs, which is actually kind of cool when you think about it because basically it forces us to have separate crews. Um, and one of the things we're trying to do with the West Coast is it shouldn't just be like a copy-paste of MAGFest and it's out on the West Coast. Um, we're trying to grow it organically in the same way that, that this event was grown, uh, which is basically find cool people, put them in charge of stuff. Um, sort of the, the, the big success of Mag Labs was we were able to put new people in charge of things and they could kind of roll with it. Um, and sort of in the context of our existing sort of infrastructure, um, and by that I mean things like uh, staff scheduling, um, we have our own internal coding system we wrote. It's called the Uber system. Um, oh, if you yeah. bought a ticket okay. to MagFest. Uh, yeah. It's probably a, most people don't know about the Uber system. Right, yeah, yeah. That's when what people I mean. look at MagFest and go, holy shit, how do you make this chaos work? What's your secret? <laughs> the real answer is the Uber system. We have, we a, have a database that is our back end and handles absolutely everything, and that's the magic behind MagFest. And uh, that's, that's all Eli. Not anymore, but for, you know, 10 years it was Eli. For the last... Two years, he's had help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's actually open is, source, by the way. It's the glue. Uh, yeah. Obviously. If anybody wants to run an event and you have a Python programmer who's a genius and can manage the system for you, you can use our system. <laughs> yep. Um, it's called Uber System. Or is it's, it's long what's it on? It's on the uh, car Oh, it's guys. also um, the there's a version of it called Rams, the R A M S Registration and Management System. Right, but where is uh, it? What's the repository? Uh, GitHub.com slash MagFest. There you go. GitHub.com slash MagFest. You can just get the Uber system and, you know, use it, yep. play with it, whatever. That's, that's the actual repository we are running, the code that's running all of registration and everything out of. Like, there's a whole room full of coders over there, and they're just working on that. And you, you could, like, literally watch their updates go by in real time on your phone right here if you wanted to. Because they're actually working on it right now, which is insane. Who's, who's working on it? Oh, uh, there's uh, a whole bunch of new folks, actually. Eli's got like a whole coding squad out there. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. We're like a software engineering company. Who thought? Um, <laughs> Someone knows how to work in GitHub. More power. The entire train oh is on fire, and me and Dom are just in the front, like hitting the gas, going, <laughs> yeah, yeah, more fire. Let's go. <laughs> hey, here, shovel the coal. Somewhere. I mean, if you're not on fire, what are we doing, right? Like, why are we here? Um, <laughs> oh, there's questions. People okay, all right. Let's things. do some questions because I could just ramble. Let's go. Uh, sorry, on the right. When is it? Where? When? Yes. Uh, where? Yes. Uh, so it's going to be um, August 25th to 27th in Santa Clara. Um, it's a Hyatt, Hyatt Regency Santa Clara. It's right outside of San Jose um, Bay Area, like near San Francisco. Right next to the, the Levi Stadium, and there's a yeah. The oh, now he puts his America, hand up. Great America, right there. So it's, yep. It's a pretty nice little location. Uh, yes, middle. Uh, questions when tickets go on sale. Good question. Soon. Um, as soon as I get yeah. some sleep. Yeah. We need, we need to create the Uber system for <laughs> it. We, we have, there's, there's quite a process that goes into like actually launching the event for real, which is like getting the hotel room squared away, getting all the registration stuff, deciding like the supporter swag and like what, there's like a whole checklist. We got to redo the website. We got so much stuff to do. It would probably be about a month, I'd say. At least. Yes, for at, least. at least. Yeah, well, we month. want to do it quick, sooner than later. I'm just yeah. saying February. Totally. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. So Mag Labs is um, September first to the third. Yes. Yeah. It is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Sorry. yeah. Yeah, we were trying to like schedule around lots of different stuff, and it's so, like the DC is getting well, crowded. 
Actually, but, that's a good uh, good little insight into how MagFest yeah, works. Yeah, you should talk about that. Uh, the scheduling. Uh, people often complain about the dates of MagFest. Like, it, it, if it's too close to New Year's, there's a bunch of people that can't come. If it's too far from New Year's, there's a bunch of people that can't come. A bunch of people want it, you know, on their birthday or whatever the hell they want. <laughs> like, no matter we, no matter where we put it, somebody's going to complain. Uh, the fact of the matter is, we don't pick our dates. The venue picks them. We go to whatever the venue is, and we're like, okay, what is the cheapest weekend you've got? What like, the, what is the weekend the where nobody is going to be in this space and it's just a ghost town? We'll fill that weekend for you and we'll put people in hotel rooms and make you money. And they go, oh, oh, really? Really? Like, you should have seen the look on the guy's face when I said we would consider doing it on Easter weekend on the West Coast. Like, it's he like, gave me this look like I just landed from Mars. <laughs> I just like, and, and, then, and then he gave me a hungry look. Like, <laughs> like really? Really? I'll put, man, you want to do Easter? We can do Easter because... Apparently nobody wants to fill their hotel on Easter weekend. Uh, so that's why we're right after New Year's, because the, the event business just goes dead instantly after New Year's. There's this huge ramp up for the holidays, and then it just like drops off and nothing happens again till March. So the weekend right after New Year's is generally the deadest weekend for, for venues like this. And that's why we ended up here, and that's why we're able to do things as cheaply as we are. And, and as effectively as a result. So. But we do try our best because sometimes they've tried to, let's see, like the weekend before Christmas? Well, they've, they've yeah. tried that yeah. before. No, they We're tried like, to dump uh -uh. the weekend before Christmas on us. <laughs> and that was, yep. that was, We're nope. Like that they've suggested Christmas before. They're like, you would do it on Christmas? We're like, <sighs> <sighs> nobody would come probably, but like <laughs> lots of people would come. I don't know. You'd it's have to like, like invite your families out to Magfest and have Christmas trees in your hotel rooms and stuff. Yeah, it's like it's, it's its own be. Christmas. Oh, as far every as I once in a while, somebody's like, "Ah, oh, you guys put the dates right when I'm getting married," and I'm like, "So get married at Magfest." <laughs> and every once in a while, they do. <laughs> Hang on, there's the one dude way in the back. Go right ahead. You you had it up the longest for a while there. Oh, advice for hosting a bigger event. Uh, well, I got. I do actually it's have hard. some, some legit advice. That just happened to us. Well, right. it okay, yeah, it's, it's you. You look around now and like Macbeth is this giant, totally overwhelming machine, and it's crazy. My advice is start. See what kind of event you can host in one month. Like start. Get if you can get like fifty people or like twenty people out to it. Do that. Then do it again. Do it again another month later. And like, be um, su like uh, super cheap about it. Like, try to do it. I mean, just think unconventionally. Like, could you do this at a library or a university or some place that'll give you the space for free? Or at another convention. Go to another convention and be like, hey, you got any spare rooms? Like, what are you doing with that room? Like, well, our group's going to host this tournament over in your room. How do, what do you think about that? Um, just keep going. And basically, make sure whatever you're doing even if it's cheap and, and crazy and you're duct taping like wires to the walls and stuff like that and borrowing. Or, or bed sheets because yeah. you don't have a screen. Or you're like screen. literally borrowing yeah. all the TVs from your parents' house or something. Yeah, like and I mean that. what you're talking CRTs, about is. CRTs, just pick them up. That is, yeah, it's just, just start, start as soon as you can and just continue to ramp up momentum. And every time do one more bigger thing than you did previously. Um, and Be like, consistent. like our motto is every event is just practice for the next one. Um, and yeah. like that's how MAGFest started and, and continued and basically that's just like that's all we do we're just like all right did that last year what can we do can we uh put two stages in that concert hall can we like do some crazy shit with the rigging i don't know like we should continue working on yeah. that so eli that would who, be my advice who's yeah. the guy that wrote the uber system and um, has been running magfest longer than anybody who is currently running magfest uh anytime anything goes wrong eli's just like yeah we'll get it right next year and it's always just, that way. The first, year, the first time of any department yeah. or, or any new thing that we do, it's kind of like, eh. or it's either knocked out of the park or it's like, yeah, we, we either fix it or we kill it. Well, yeah, occasionally they're great, but running it is, is incredibly stressful. And then occasionally <laughs> yep. they're like, they're all right and it works, and then we sort of we tune it up and then it gets better next time or whatever. But yeah. uh, your actual question was advice for running a large event, and uh, I think my best advice is make sure you have health insurance. Because you're going to kill yourself. 
<laughs> the rest is just what Dom said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just keep start somewhere and keep going. Okay, let's do uh, on the left here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. I gotta uh, sleep. I'm going yeah. to sleep. Yeah, Set me, my and, alarm for me and Dom. I'm, I'm announcing that right now. Me oh. and Dom will be present at MagWest. We're going to do this uh, awesome panel on how to run MagFest. And yeah. It's going to be. <laughs> man, let me tell you we'll about even, that. One. You might even get some autographs out of us. Steph, we can put that on the schedule now, right? And it's perfect. We'll get Guy Book up. It's awesome. I can um, do that. Okay. Yeah. okay. I apologize because I've let's started. Let's continue losing track. And, and sort of sweep the room here, Dom. Okay. Yes. All right. Good. The relationship with the hotel. Yeah. yeah, the Gaylord's awesome. We they put up with our shit. It's so amazing. Man, like every and they're just like, yeah, you guys, you guys aren't the worst. Don't worry. And we're like, really? Is that? Are you really? Is that for real? Okay. I'm not even gonna say. <laughs> Mostly because they don't even tell us, but uh, because they're smart. Yeah. Well. Yeah. No, and and for real, this crowd cares about the event. They have a whole bunch of events where people don't care. You know, it's businessmen who are paying a lot of money and they're bored and they don't give a shit about this hotel or the thing that they're in or whatever. And they get drunk and trash the place and the hotel has to deal with it. We're not like that. Yeah, can I tell that story? Which? I'm going to tell. So, well, it's the, <laughs> oh boy. it's the security one. Like, then, like, our first year here or whatever, we, oh. it was, yeah. it was, oh, there was uh, the, 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 the exit no, that's... signs there. People were banging on them, and they broke them and stuff, right? And then the security guy thought that we would protect the guy who was doing it, and we're like, "No, throw the book at him!" And they're and the security guys are like, "We like you a lot." Yeah. No, that was that was me. Like every yeah, uh, every other year, somebody knocks over exit signs at Magfest, and then the hotel comes to us, and they're like, "Somebody's or, knocking down exit signs," and we're just like, "God damn it! Okay, how much do we have to pay for that? Because you can't catch the guy." And then we came to the Gaylord, and the very first day of the first year we were here, I got a text from our security guys, like, somebody's knocking over exit signs. And I'm like, God damn it, again, okay, whatever, you guys got it under control, I'm going to bed. The Gaylord has security cameras that work. <laughs> so I woke up to a text from the same security guy who was like, we got the guy, what do you want us to do with him? And I'm like, really? Fuck that guy. Throw the book at him. <laughs> and apparently they were in a meeting with Gaylord security people at the time, and he literally just took his phone and was like, <laughs> here you go. President of MAGFest says, fuck that guy. <laughs> and, and the Gaylord loved us for that, because apparently, you know, when they get dentists in or something and and one of their people does something stupid then they fight the hotel on it they and we were just like, like what did, why would we fight you on that that guy's clearly a jackass like get get rid of him yep oh wow, oh, wow. all right <laughs> yeah yeah we're, we're adding hands but i think this guy in the gray right here had yeah badly Oh, Ooh, oh, that's a story. Oh, God, both dude, of are both of those right are, are huge, <laughs> painful questions. Um, but I guess that's what we're here for. So, um, Dom, do you want to take the sure. nonprofit one? Well, we can do that one. I can also talk about the communication stuff real quick. On site's a kind of a different beast than normal. Um, let's talk about normal offline, like in the plan up. Um, email, there's a lot of email. But actually, really, in the last two years, um, Slack, we are super heavy Slack users now. Um, and basically, I think we have. We have. Yeah, we sort of <laughs> subsumed our IRC channel and also plugged it into Slack, along with Discord is also like relayed into Slack. And um, our This Slack is a common theme with MagFest, by the way. We come up with like crazy, contrived, insane MacGyver technical solutions. We, we can open up our, our warehouse door through Slack. I, I have a yeah. robot. Like you can literally send a message to a bot on Slack that will open the door to our warehouse. <laughs> and... IRC, Slack, and Discord are, are connected by bots that like our guys implemented. So it's yep. just like this yep. big meta chat system. But yeah, we've got about 450 people in Slack. We have maybe 300 active users when it, like at the height of planning, maybe like a week or two ago. Um, we have, I don't know, like 
40 or 50 public channels in Slack for all the different departments. So there's one for like game room and this concerts and panels and mage there's Excuse weather, me, mages. There's the yeah, other. weather, space, Beer. Well, yeah. random. And then, and then there's the, the Overwatch channel and yep. random, yep. which was renamed to Shitpost City for a while. <laughs> yep. There's also LAN, a.k.a. Hammock City. Hammock um, City, there's, yeah. Uh, they love that. <laughs> Slack's anyway, out this of control. is all silliness. Tell them about nonprofit. Uh, well, right, and I mean, there's an interesting bit hammock. here, though. With, oh, I'm sorry. You go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, that was a stupid question. There, there's an interesting thing, though, right? When you put that many people in the same same room, uh, chaos happens. Um, and what's really interesting, I mean, actually, on site, Slack's pretty awesome. Like, uh, basically, we, we you can tag each other. It'll pop up on the phone. I'm wearing a Pebble, so people tag me in Slack, and it pops up no, there. Pebble. Oh, Pebble. Oh, God. No, I, and I uh, too soon? Too soon. Um, yeah, I know. This, for like event running, the smartwatches are incredible. Uh, um, Apple. Ah. But um, then you yeah. get to deal with like um, people sending you know channel notifications that notify every single user and ping their phones, and like we have that enabled because it's a useful thing. But then you get people like, oh, why did you ping my phone with this announcement? I don't care about that. Like, so you have to kind of moderate it and kind of. There's this whole like meta layer around the communications and. Um, well, it's just it's just Not kind of a all. thing. It's it's a network effect, right? It's just basically there's a huge, awesome information resource, and people are like, "Whoa, how'd you get that?" And you're like, "Oh, you just grab the app, and you're good to go." And then you plug them in, and they're Don't, like, "Oh, well, yeah, how did it get more by has to do this? with how like cell phones work. Everybody gets cell phones because everybody's using a cell phone. So if right. everybody's using Slack, everybody's going to download Slack. It's kind of like Facebook for the first user is totally useless, but for the you know the next hundred millionth user it's it's really super awesome and you can instantly plug into this huge infrastructure that's already been built so it's that sort of network effect like the values in the network um, so yeah so there's a lot of slack um, we do email like I mean it, it used to be just email pretty much and now slack has taken over at least half of that um, we do this thing with the email where basically we have uh, mailing lists all over the place and the mailing list r guidelines are topics so like concerts or panels or um, the board of directors or whatever and and our internal how goal many mailing lists do we have right now oh well, uh, do you have any idea probably a hundred at two least for each, one or two for each department yeah, yeah so because on the order of a hundred mailing lists and and our rule with the mailing list is the following which is basically if you're writing an email that is about magfest in any way try to send it to a mailing any mailing list like you're trying to, to get CC at least one it, more know? set of eyes on that, so essentially, if you're sending something on behalf of panels, you send to the panels mailing list, and that makes like everybody else that's there is like, oh, hey, look, there's uh, Steph talking to this panelist. Okay, cool, I got that information. It's sort of a passive like osmosis type thing. Um, if you want to get really insane with that, and I do at some point, by the way, we're going to do this this year, maybe I don't know. Um, there's a our payment processor Stripe. Um, they're a credit card company online that makes it really easy to take payments. If you pay with a credit card for Magfest, you use them. Um, basically, they have this whole insane dedicated email philosophy guide that's really interesting about uh, all these different nuances. Anyway, I'm getting a little technical on this stuff, but it's uh, basically, you just gotta pay attention to it, and our rule is like, start with one mailing list, put everybody on it, and then when people get annoyed at the volume of messages, that's the only time you split them apart. So you essentially just grow organically as, as that happens. So you want to resist the urge if you're like setting up something for your organization. You, want to, you don't want to start immediately and make 500 mailing lists and then 499 are unused. You just, just keep them organic and then split them as time goes on. So that's what's up with that. Um, okay, <laughs> let's, let's keep working. There's hands going up and Jay you haven't even gotten to the nonprofit yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call on Jay. All right, you do it. Call on Jay. Oh wait, we didn't talk about the nonprofit at all. Oh, the nonprofit. Sorry. Sorry. One right. second. So it was a good sorry, question. It's very you're relevant. Next. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. The nonprofit status. Um, okay, so for a long time, MacFest was an LLC. Uh, the owners of that LLC, uh, which was this guy and Brendan and uh, Jer. Uh, oh and right, Eli. you weren't on that. No, he wasn't. Eli, yeah, yeah. It started at me, five. Brendan and Jer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, we're running it as though it were a nonprofit, aka they weren't taking the money out of it afterwards. So essentially, what the, really the biggest difference between sort of a nonprofit and a for-profit is uh, that you own the for-profit's assets, um, and basically you you take you can just be like, oh hey, Magfest has like a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, cool. I'm gonna just that's mine. Thank you. Um, but in a, in a for in a nonprofit, you can't do that. The 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 assets are owned by the public. 
Um, and basically, if you are a board of directors or whatever, you're just sort of a steward for that. You're not, you don't actually own those assets. Um, and the thing about uh, for-profits as well is that you have that option, uh, but you also get taxed on it, and you have to, like, basically any money that MAGFest makes gets tax. you hit a tax hit to all the uh, people that are the actual owners and stuff like that. Um, so essentially, the short version of that is they were running it like of a, a nonprofit in that they weren't taking money out of it. It was just all the money was going right back into the next show, um, but without any of the benefits of actually being a nonprofit. So around four, five years ago, yeah, something I like used that? Yeah, I used to have money bouncing in and out of my bank account for MAGFest reasons because I was an LLC owner, and all that did was fuck me on taxes. <laughs> like, this, this giant amount of money shows up and then goes away, but, you know, it, it, yeah. I get taxed on it. Um, so to become a for uh, to, to switch from a for profit to a non profit um, is a whole like first of all be, doing a non profit five hundred one c three application if anybody's ever gone through that is just a total nightmare it is a seventy page form from the IRS they they want to see you check all these very specific boxes in certain ways and not check these other ones because they will instantly fail your application and just like it, it, it's it's just this super landmine really crazy thing. Um, so you kind of go to go through that. You got to do a lot of writing. You got to show that. On top of that, if you're converting an existing company to to a nonprofit, or essentially more specifically, your existing company is going away and the assets are being transferred to your nonprofit, um, then basically there's a whole other layer on top of that, and it's a big nightmare and it sucks. Um, so basically, we sat down with accountants and lawyers for the better part of two years to put this application together, um, and. Uh, then they said no, um, and they're like, eh, we don't, you know, we don't think, you know, Magfest no. is gaming, and that's basically gambling. When the, uh, when the like, IRS sees the word gaming, yeah. they immediately think gambling. And yeah. that obviously has a lot of very specific rules, and they're very I, uptight about it. I got a call from our... And like, yeah. they get that we're not exactly gambling, but I don't think the IRS knows a hell of a lot about video games. So yeah. they is, rejected our our proposal on the grounds that it was more entertainment than educational, which was sort of the primary focus of our, our uh, uh, the application. I have, yeah. I have the best words. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the primary focus of our sort of application was the idea that we are an educational organization and that's you know that's why we should be nonprofit well and primarily that we have you know old school video game systems that is basically like the entire expo hall is like right. a there's, living there's museum issues you know? of preservation and all these other things yeah. and I mean uh, we don't need to explain to you guys that what magfest does is is fantastic and important and noble and all these things but we have to explain it to the IRS yeah um, and our, our IRS guy called me on the phone randomly which is funny because the IRS never calls you so I got I was just like hey what's up and they're like, hi, this is uh, such and such from the IRS. I'm like, it's from the IRS? I'm like, driving, man. Let me, okay, hang on, let me pull over. Uh, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you know, we're not probably going to go for this. And yeah, I, oh, it's like video games? Is that what you guys are talking about? I thought you were talking about like gambling and card games and stuff. Oh, yeah, you mean like Nintendo DS? Like my grandson's got one of those and it's pretty good. And I'm just like, yeah. oh, man. Oh, man. So, yeah, we had to fight that, and uh, we oh. ended up getting <laughs> like letters of recommendation from the Smithsonian and, and a bunch of other entities that we'd work with. And, We're also not and these, geez, I wish we should frame that Smithsonian letter. Oh, man. It was amazing. Was... And it, it, it was just like the most glowing, like, it was we do incredible things with MAGFest, and MAGFest is worthy of the nobility of the Smithsonian. Like, no, no, no. It we said, we it can't said, do these incredible things without them. No, it was ridiculous. It, it yeah. said it was just like, oh, uh, the Smithsonian. It started off with a little paragraph about their 400-year history and their, like you know, the mission and all this other stuff. And, it, and then they said, MAGFest is a fellow educational institution similar to ourselves. And I'm just like, man, that is that is right. something right there. Yeah. Whew. So that 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 so, drove it in. Yeah, that was and, that uh, was awesome. Uh, side note, because you know I'm gonna get a little philosophical again, like I do. Get, get um, from the mic. Oh yeah. All right. Well, I'm 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 used to just being loud enough for the room. <laughs> um, there's there's sort of you know, uh, for-profit corporation, non-profit corporation, and church, and the the real the really the the only difference between a nonprofit and a church is a church doesn't file taxes. The nonprofit doesn't pay them, but they still have to file them. The church just doesn't file them at all. And 
and Magfest is is somewhere sort of in in between in this zone where like we're not exactly like we're sort of run like a for profit, but we're more like a non profit, and honestly, we're more like a church. But that's a little too hard to to get across to the IRS. So the, just the closest we could get was non profit, and that's where we went. But it, we're we're in a bit of a weird place, is all I'm saying. Uh, there's there's sort of standard things that nonprofits do, and we don't do all of those. We're we're a little off in left field from you know normal nonprofits. Like massive fundraising or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like we, we don't do any fundraising pretty much at all. Does anybody want um, me to? To read yeah, just real some briefly, just super, super quick. Read so I'm like, this what are you bit. guys doing? I'm just going to pull up the dang lever. Uh, let's see, it says um, The DC area's music and gaming festival, known as MAGFest, has been an invaluable institution dedicated to the education, appreciation, and preservation of video game art, music, and history. The Smithsonian American Art Museum celebrates American artworks in all media spanning more than three centuries, and like MAGFest, the Smithsonian identifies video games as a new mode of cr creative expression. Since 2012, with the Smithsonian American Ar Art Museum organized the Art of Video Games exhibition, MAGFest has played an essential role in our video game education events and outreach. Our most successful educational event with MAGFest was December 7, 2014, Indie Arcade. This event featured three primary educational elements. The first educational element was a series of workshops that taught the public how to, to design and build their own video games. For the second element, the public learned about the history of video games by playing some of the earliest video games developed, all provided by MAGFest's archive. The final educational element uh, gave aspiring game developers the opportunity to speak to current independent game developers and learn that they were working on what they were working on and the path they took to become developers. All of the Indie Arcade's components were made possible because of MAGFest resources and dedication to education. As a fellow educational institution, the Smithsonian is grateful to have MAGFest's help and guidance as we continue to welcome video games as art into our collection and develop educational events around video games. Yeah. Friggin' Smithsonian. Pretty fucking cool. Uh, you, you see what I mean when I'm saying we should just like frame that sucker and just like, <laughs> look at that. It's pretty great. Pretty fucking good. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. So starting a nonprofit oh is God, really yeah. ridiculously hard. Non -profit. And it took like years. And it literally took years. Oh, we, got, we could get insane. into endless discussions about it. It yeah. took us two years to do it. And if you want to hit us up after this or and whatever then, and specific questions, we have, you yep. know, I, I have some regrets. We have some amazing benefits. There was there was problems with the LLC. There's just, no matter how you do it, it's a pain in the ass. But it's, 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 there's a lot of interesting and complicated things going on, and a lot of a lot of I guess uh, misconceptions. Like a lot of people think things about nonprofits that just aren't true. Uh, and then there's a lot of things that people don't even know about that you know it's just like oh no actually there's this other restriction rather than the restrictions you thought were were there. So. Anyway, all right. Anyway, Jay. I think, I think Jay was next question. Jay, Jay, Jay was, go, uh, yeah. How much money do you spend every year on storing snacks? Storing what? Snacks. Snacks. Not, not that much. Not that much, because yeah. we eat them. We try to eat them. Otherwise, <laughs> the rats eat them. There's yeah. rats in the warehouse. There's rats in every there's, warehouse. Yeah, there's like a pallet or two worth of Wats. like Gatorade and water at the end of every <laughs> MAGFest that just continues to, to go to the next thing and go to MAGSTOCK. Yeah. Yeah. And then the entire bathroom that has a TV in it, a pizza and all that stuff, it's just ceiling or floor to ceiling of a cup of noodle. <laughs> yeah, we, we eat it. Actually, okay. I mean, really, yeah, there is, that we doesn't have, really yeah, come back to would, warehouse. Well, the, the answer to your question, you would have to sort of calculate, like, prorated, like, as we clear the space out, as the event passes and we eat the food, you know, how much are we paying for that storage? And, yeah. Oh, wait. And I guess the other, the other thing is that. Um, I can't remember if this is true. I think this is true. The staff suite donates a lot of the stuff to the food bank afterwards. So, because we can't store, what is it going to sit in the warehouse for a couple of months? Like, who's going to eat it? 
So um, anything that's like perishable, I think we donated to the local food bank at the end of the MagFest. Yeah. I believe. I'm I remember sure. what year was pretty it? Sure. We had like yeah. like three giant totes of gazpacho soup left over <laughs> oh, at the God. end. We're like doing the loadout, and the food guys just have like these like fifty gallon containers of soup, and we're we're all just like, oh, gazpacho. <laughs> what do you, what do you, gazpacho. What do you do? With it that? went. It went everywhere. It was. It was on the loading dock. I don't know how it happened, but there was gazpacho Okay, everywhere. next question. Anyway, yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, how we run MAGFest, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think... I you, you pick think the question, people. There I, you go. Uh, the person with right, that one. In the, middle, <laughs> in the middle, and then we'll, we'll go back that way, and then we'll just go that way. And just, but I think you had it up longer for what, Jay? We ran out of space. We, yeah, we had to cap it at three thousand. Yeah. It was yeah. too too many people. No, I mean, good story and insight people. into you know Magfest and how we run it. We had never had lines before. Yeah, never. Um, we had, and I'll I'll Magfest keep it nine, short. Like, but Magfest eight had two thousand people at the Mark Center, and for those of you guys that've been to Mark Center, you you get the gist. Like if you've been to the recent events, those were about fourteen hundred, thirteen hundred people. Yeah, and you get the, sort of the feel for for how that is in that space. MAGFest 8 had 2,000 people, and it was like, it was nice. 22. Huh? 2,200? Yeah, sure. 22. We were expecting, Two th okay. eight, eight, we were expecting 15. Roughly 2,000 people at MAGFest 8. I know all and the figures. We, we started <laughs> having crowding issues. We had started having problems with, like, lines for the elevator and lines for certain panels, and, you know, parking was a nightmare. Um, and nightmare. so for the next year, we didn't have anywhere else to go, really. And so we just looked at like, okay, what is the limit that we have to cap at? And we looked at sort of their fire code and what their capacity was. And so we capped at 3,000. And it was a nightmare. Like the event was apparently really good for the attendees, but the staff was destroying ourselves trying to keep up with everything. And like we were just dealing with one problem after another. The elevators were dying horrible deaths. Uh, it, it, was, it was really a nightmare. Had to clear and a room before, so like yeah. the door side was like, yeah, you all have to leave the room. Yeah, we, we had got lines that, wasn't for a rule. that wasn't a rule before. I was like, well, we right. have a line now. We don't know what's. People we were lining up for room. panels Sorry. like two hours in advance, and we had no idea what to do with that. You know, usually they just sit there from one yeah. one panel to the next. That was one. Uh, that was the year we learned no about. Deal. So yeah. Anyway, uh, the the point of that really is that's that's how we figured out that's you know the answer to your question, and we learned our lesson. And in this location, we decided to cap at 20,000. It has nothing to do with fire code or capacity or anything. We just kind of looked at the space and we're like, okay, where are we going to hit that point where we're in that sweet spot where like the crowding is starting to become a problem, but, but only just in, in a few little places and overall the event is really cool and feels good. And we hit that last year and everybody kind of agreed that like we're right at that point. And we could look at like the fire code limitations and jam this place full of like 40,000 people and it would be a fucking nightmare for everybody. So yeah, we're, like we're, we're setting the cap where it makes sense this time and not making that mistake again. Yep. Oh gosh, okay, we're just gonna Jeez. go this way. So, uh, teal shirt, please. Oh, jeez. Mm. That's going to be a I, very I, different story, not, depending on who you not, ask. Not really complaining at you, but I hate questions like this just because there's so many things. Like, I, can't, I, could, I could list off, like, the top ten of each of the things that you just asked for, and I don't know. I'll, I'll let these guys answer this one. We don't have all night. <laughs> all right, here it is. We have a forklift in our warehouse and pallet racking and a team working on that. And now we can load up trucks. We can just take, like, pallet, boom, boom, boom. 14 pallets on the truck, it's out. We used to have to pack the trucks before we were doing pallets box by box. And, like, it would take a crew of, like, 14 people hours to pack a truck. And then you had to take a crew of, like, 10 people to unpack it. And then you have to spend weeks afterwards sorting through it. And moving it was a nightmare. So we got our logistics game together like mostly last year and then really got it going this year and now we can take those pallets and stick them up on the high shelves and the warehouse is awesome uh so that's the surprisingly 
um, easier thing. It's still difficult, but it's it's a lot easier than it used to be. Um, and then, I mean, I the don't know. most difficult thing we're not allowed to talk about. Yep. So you can tell them about the second most difficult. Second most difficult. I could give a totally generic answer: communication. Like communication is so freaking hard. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like if you think you're being transparent and you're having meetings and you're informed, it just doesn't matter. Like people just don't. Uh, we have there, there's a information overload, and also it's just like you can say something a couple of different times, and unless you really follow up with each person a, a couple of times, like it's it's incredible the things that end up slipping through the cracks that you thought were like concrete. You're like, ah, I really communicated this a couple of times to a couple of different people. I think everybody's on the same page, and then you show up on site, and it's just like. Nope, nope, nobody heard that? Nope, all right, you okay. You didn't read that email? Like, all right, we'll deal Gee. with it. Um, <laughs> and then I gave up on keeping up on my emails three years ago at MAGFest 8.5. Yeah. I have something like 20,000 unread emails right now. Yeah, I just, yeah. I just look at the subject lines and keep going. Because like you said, we have like hundreds of mailing lists. Like everything that happens with any department goes through lists and we're on all the lists. And I like so, being on all the you lists. Know, I, I guess, like keeping it at zero, but like about a month before, like somewhere in December, it's like I woke up and I had like just over 200 emails and I'm like, no, and can I, nope, got to stop now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just pick out the important ones. So, yeah, and just that's that's really it. It's communication. And filters, Gmail I'll say filters. that's probably a, an issue in any organization, but it's especially difficult in MAGFest because we are this insane haphazard collection of whoever wants to do something at MAGFest and that, that just spans the entire rainbow of like anybody who has money or doesn't, knows games or doesn't, is into music or whatever, like everything. Somebody comes to us and they're like, we want to do a cool thing and we're like, sure, go for it. We never say no. Well. And, well, not never. We, we should say no more often than we do, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Depends on what it is. If it fits, most of the time it fits. Because people will get MAGFest and then they're like, oh, I would like to do this. And then they stick it in the incubator and it's just like, all right, let's, let's try this. And then that's how we got games on film. That's the, that, the film festival, that's how we got that, That's um, also literally how I am in the position I am now. <laughs> I said, I'm willing to do things, and then I said that there's things that are problems, and I can know how to fix them, and I'm willing to fix them. And I, people said yes, and I did things, and all of a sudden, I'm a magic man. <laughs> there you go. He's a magic man. You're a magic man. And then, yeah, I guess, you know, I would say the other thing that's always difficult is, like, staying positive in the face of adversity. Like, uh, adversity. what did I say? Adversary. Adversary. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> 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 Not enough alcohol. We're good at words. Okay. I'm just going to take a nap uh, over here. Fine. We're tired. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Yeah. You know, like basically the crew, the crew here can literally do anything. It's insane. The, the gamut of technical skills and like uh, the walks of life that everybody comes from at MAGFest. We have 1,300 volunteers and they just, they pull off miracles all the time. It's ridiculous. We're, we're um, all and problem solvers. Yeah. It's really what it is. We just see and a thing and we just want to make it better and fix it and just like knock it out of the park. You can, you can get discouraged sometimes when uh, like something doesn't quite work out or you thought you had something bolted down but you really don't have it bolted down and uh, like it's always important to just be like okay, take a breath. How do, we, how do we make this better? How do we make this work? And like you can turn around even the crappiest, most ridiculous situations that are just completely beyond your control into something awesome sometimes. So you just got to keep, you got to keep pounding on that. Um, all right, let's do You had your hand up first of everybody that currently oh. had their hands up. Yes, in the back, gray Jeez. shirt. My bad. <laughs> so much for sweeping. We are really bad at picking the, the questions. All right. Go ahead. Just, just That's a great question. Um, uh. Every organization is very different about this, by the way. We did a lot of homework when we were deciding. Um, short version, right now we have um, six full-time employees of MAGFest. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Forgot. there's there's um, five people on the board of directors. Five to six in the like, yeah, right. In the last three. two weeks, we went to number six, um, <laughs> and essentially the the um, there's thirteen hundred volunteers, I think, or is it sixteen hundred? I think it's thirteen hundred. Well, we all started as volunteers. But, uh, volunteers. So I mean, and to well, break okay, hold to on. break that Explain down a little further. Volunteer versus staff. Right. Well, I mean, kind of like that's not exactly the most important. Well, I would say the most important distinction staff, is then. there's maybe throughout the year at all times. There are like 100 seriously active volunteers, and they tend to be the department heads, but there's also other, you know, it's, a, it's, it's not I'd necessarily... I'd say more a, like 
two to three hundred. Yeah, this is of, the two of, to like three. active year round, like people that show up at the warehouse and help us move stuff and yeah. fix machines and are you know making connections and scheduling and stuff like year round. Yep. And then there's an army of about a thousand people that just sort of show up at the door and work a few shifts. Uh, and then there's uh, what, what are we at for department heads? A hundred. We're about a hundred department heads. Yeah. Um, each yeah. each department. A lot of departments just have one head, and uh, some have two, two some have three. Have three. Yeah, it's, it's kind of department. We let we let the department yeah. decide. So you know, department is just sort of like this designation where I mean, it's really mostly software based. If we decide that a department should be separated in the Uber system, then we separate it. So we have like the music department is one department, and it's like everything. <laughs> and oh. then we have the tea room which is just a little room that we have some tea in for the staff. That's a separate department. <laughs> it's pretty funny when you put it that way. The music, oh, it's, oh man. Yes, it, the tea room does have a mailing list. It along does. with like music. It's like all music at MAGFest on this mailing list. And then the tea room. So, the yeah, music gets fun. spread up also. So there's like jam clinic and then there's jam space and yep. then there's, there's a lot. losing track. I know. It's higher. All right, let's do some more rapid fire questions right here. Staff versus volunteers. Um, the people who are running the music events, or even internally here, mm -hmm. uh, obviously you're outsourcing. You're bringing in contractors yep. for audio. Etc. Some, some, yes. Oh, you, you want me to we talk about? We don't own this yeah. stuff. Look at that. There's a Sonus logo on this. Some things we need. Okay, let, let me talk. Right. Sorry. So, so, for instance, in the uh, concert hall, mm -hmm. typically. Magfest volunteers running the actual production versus uh, employees of the contracted production company. Yeah, that's a good I think question. I can give you a, a good sort of top down impression of, of that. Um, most of the people that are sort of running things, operating things, in charge of things at Magfest are Magfest volunteers. The, the contractors are generally the suppliers. The, the, guy, the, the, the rental company, you know, and uh, this is general, it's not universal, and when it comes to like the AV guys in the, in the concerts, the, the AV company is working with our volunteers a lot, but there, there tends to be a lot of emphasis on letting our volunteers work with our bands and everything to sort of run lighting and sound and all these things, like the, the sort of, the, the creative side of things is handled by our volunteers, and the, the more technical side of things tends to be handled by the, the rental company who's giving us the technical and gear. I'll, I'll say as well, um, for, we kind of, for AV contractors, it's kind of split right now between uh, basically the big music stuff um, and kind of the other smaller music rooms and sort of everything else at MAGFest. Um, so for, for the everything else part, that is more like, okay, contractor, bring your stuff, drop it here, our volunteers got this. Um, so they're the ones that come in and set it up. And then typically the contractor will you know, hang out and like if we have technical questions or something, they're on standby. Um, and then for the concert hall, it's a little more involved with that because you got to get involved with the hotel's rigging systems and all this other like crazy stuff you got to do. Um, so th those guys do have their staff here and they're a little more involved. But once once it's kind of installed, um, the people that operate it are our volunteers. Um, so like basically sound lights, um, monitor, um, all that kind of stuff tends to be tends to be our people. Not universal, but most of the time that's our that's our goal usually. So yeah, is that good? Cool, awesome. All right, real quick. Who's had their hand up for a really long time? This guy in the middle, that guy over okay. there. The dude right dead center, center in the middle here. This guy All right, here. yeah. Uh, I'm here from Los Angeles, so I'm super excited about that. All cool. snap. Oh, yeah. Full stop, how do I get involved? I want to be involved with it. I want to, you know. What do you like to do? The, yeah, okay, that guy who finally put See, his hand up back there. Oh, look at that's he's, Ryan. He's, you should go talk to you Ryan. You should actually literally talk to him. Because yeah, he's going to be our volunteer uh, coordinator, He's probably right? the best answer yeah. to your question, honestly. Yeah. Talk to that guy. Um, but but yeah. also, um, you could do magwest at magfest.org. That, that hits the current folks sort of on that. Are you on that list? I forget. I don't know. Cool, great. You should be. <laughs> we probably should put you on that list. We'll, we'll make it so. We'll <laughs> Brett. Um, that's a mailing list. It hits a whole bunch of people, including us. And, and uh, also the other guy that's a Meg West guy, which I kind of probably should have texted. Okay. All right. I got a question after your question. How do you handle stress? Would you like me to send for Darren? Because. 
Because Mag West is the beginning of what we are intending to be another big event. It's going to be all fire and very little train. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, fire to train ratio is. <laughs> Yeah, it's just gonna, you know, one of those little like Find out the next push month. things like that. For sure. With like with like dynamite going off. <laughs> All right, sweet. We will see you there. Okay. We were thinking about possibly maybe doing something in LA, uh, like a small little kickoff, something staff. Yeah, I don't, wait. I don't even know. Yes, yes, maybe. It's just an idea. Nothing concrete. Wait. No, I'm yeah, talking Ryan, about Ryan. Ryan, like you're quest, running like it. We'll tell quest. you about it later. Did we try to do this already? I don't know. We might just come and throw a party in LA and just be like, who's in town? All right, cool. What's up? Yeah, well, so, no, honestly, we do, we do these little game over shows. It's an idea. God damn it. Uh, we, we, do, we do little shows all over the place that we call Game Over that is just, the, we just sort of throw the MAGFest brand at it and a little bit of support. We, you know, we'll help people out with finances or whatever, and they can just put oh. on a concert that is, you know, some of the bands that play MAGFest will show up, and they'll have like four bands at a mm. random nightclub in Denver or wherever it is. And we do those all over the place, here and there. And so, you know, doing something like that in L.A. is just sort of, you know, we'll line up a couple of bands and, and throw a party there. So that might be something that happens. Cool. There's, there's some um, other thing in, in L.A. There's a retro thing coming up, like, toward the end oh, of the Oh, there's month. a lot of stuff in L.A. Well, no, yeah. no, there's a very specific one that Steve puts on, and, and uh, Nico's going to be there with uh, Super Madness. Yeah. All right. Well, dude in the right. black shirt here. Yes, is, uh, sorry. Black shirt, and then we'll come up here, and then we'll go over there. What, uh, what happened to the video game challenges? And are they ever going to come back? Oh, God, I wish. Video and that's, uh, there's, oh, there's the some insight booth? into how MAGFest works, which is what this panel is about. Yeah. yeah. We, had, no. we had Ryan to work it, and then without Ryan, it's I, sad. Yeah. This is the, that is a how MAGFest works question for sure, because what happened was one guy came to us and was like, I have this idea, can I do this thing? And we're like, what do you need? And he's just like, you know, give me some table space or something, I'll handle it. And that's what we did. We gave him some table space and he showed up with a bunch of laptops and all the challenges were set up. He himself had gone through the whole thing to set up all the games with those save states and he did all the work, ton of work. And it was one of those things that was just an experiment and it, it was a hit, like people loved it. And so it expanded, and we gave him some support, but he was still the guy, oh. you know? He was the guy doing it, making the challenges happen, and he was putting a ton of work into it. And life happened. I think he had a kid. I don't remember for sure. He just sort of, you know, real life was putting pressure on him, and he sort of slowly backed out. And then we kind of tried to run it without him, and it just kind of turns out without that guy, we don't really have the resources to run the challenges. And... That is honestly how MAGFest works. It's, it's people that show up that are like, hey, I want to do this cool thing, and we're like, go for it, do the cool thing. And then we try and support this cra crazy spider web network of everybody doing cool stuff, and sometimes it's fantastic, and sometimes we can like hand it off to the next guy, and sometimes somebody leaves and we lose something that was cool. But that's sort of, that's the nature of, of this crazy, complicated beast. I, uh, I do believe all that code is on our GitHub as well. And if not, it yeah, probably if, should if be. If you want to pick that back so up, if anybody or wants if you know to somebody make that, that happen, wants to, wants to take the, the torch and do it. Things. Yeah. Yeah. It was super cool. It was a really cool thing. He did a good job. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Hang on. In front. I know you. Do it. How we do uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, that'll That's just take question. time, and we tell that story many times. If anybody wants to hear about the internet story, you know, check in on multiple of these panels. Basically, we, we, we jury-rig it because it would be too expensive to just buy it. But that's just a story we repeat a lot. So, yep. um, dude over here on the right has been popping up a lot. Okay. Uh, so the question uh, is how to, can, uh, can we do it? Okay. Yeah. Gosh. Well, As phrased, you asked, are there any plans to work with the hotel and, and change how the rooms are reserved? As phrased, no, there are not any plans. There are ideas, and we're looking at these ideas and seeing which one of them is actually feasible, and then we'll turn it into a plan. We are well aware of the problem. This place sold out in 15 minutes this year, which blew us all away. 
I mean, we knew it was going to go quick. We figured it would be like a day. Twelve hours. Yeah, we we literally were looking yeah. at the that was, that was where my bet was. hitting refresh, and we're like, "This has to be a bug. This is yeah. not real." Right? No. And oh like, people were coming to me, and we're like, it, "It's telling me they're sold out." And I'm like, "No, no, no. That's probably just a glitch. Those, you know, it won't be sold out for like at least until tonight. I'm sure you can get a room." Nope. I was lying to him. Fifteen minutes gone. Uh, so yeah, that's something that we have to address. But if you know how to fix that. Like, if you know how the Marriott's reservation system works and you can reprogram it for us or something, like, you know, let us know. Yeah, if you have more we're, ideas, we're interested we like in ideas. taking on that engineering project. Um, but I actually did look around at some technical stuff for, they use a system called Passkey and it's really kind of difficult to interface with. And I don't know, it's not impossible. We're, we're checking it out. I want to check it out. We should, we should make it happen. We just need time. Um, Fortunately, we have a year. Yeah, we got it. Uh, it's well after eleven. I should, uh, I should roll. Yeah, yeah, we probably should. This has been going on for more than an hour. Yeah, I've totally. Got, like people in the queue. Yep, yep. Uh, um, let's take. Let's. I hope we do like three more questions. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And there's three people over here with their hands just shot up. Uh, in the in the blue jacket right here. Yes. Oh. Yep. You remember the burning train metaphor? We're either going to explode and go well, flying into a million pieces off of a cliff, the, the or we're going to hit Mach 1. The very short answer to that is, uh, the very practical answer is, once MegWest is sustainable, um, that we do another one somewhere, and then we do another one, and we do another one, and then we're oh, doing... No, 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 he said here. another one somewhere. No, no, no. <laughs> as soon as MegWest is successful, we're going to Rio. Okay, Paul. <laughs> next, next question. What do we got? Okay. Committee. What was the last uh, thing? I'm sorry. <laughs> what a dirty word. How often do we meet? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Different so departments to pl plan about differently. It really depends. me, Brendan, and Dom. <laughs> All three of us are very much loose seat of the pants. Let's fucking rock, jump, and we'll figure out how to open the parachute later. Uh, and that's how MAGFest ran up until around MAGFest 10. Uh, and we had plenty of meetings, we had plenty, of, and like, like we said, the communication difficulties. Brendan used to run everything on IRC, and that was, like, it, it, it was terrible. Like, it just didn't work, and it was just we a troll fest. IRC, like, our meetings yeah. were on IRC, and they were more dick jokes than meeting, and, uh, you know, it, it was frustrating. Keeping it light. <laughs> um, yeah, that, so, that was the old days, yeah. Yeah, in the old days... It was, it was far more haphazard than it is now, so there's not really a good answer to your question. We just faked it. We just, just like, full speed ahead, we'll make it up as we go. But now it's just down to departments. Like, some, some, like my job, for guests, it could start in March or June, trying to like find people or like start emailing them that early because some scheduling is crazy, you know? Uh, other things, we yeah, gotta I mean, work on the thing, we have to sure. work on like the air conditioning now to make, the there, there's kind of like long-term central like planning committee type deal essentially that just kind of checks on how everybody's doing. Really, the department heads are doing a lot of the heavy lifting at Magfest, and they kind of just operate at their own schedule. So whenever they have some time, they'll work on something or mess with something and kind of go from there. So our role is just to keep all the tools like available to them. So if they want to just pull the trigger on stuff, they they know what to do. So. Like All right, so we got, yep. we got two more because okay, hands wait. went up simultaneously. So I'm going to get gonna her in the, in the green here. Yes. Okay, so I'm a convention and... Um, You're a convention? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because we're stupid and crazy, and we're it hurts. We're really slow. That's why. Because we've never done this. Well, before. I mean, very simply, um, I, we're, we're we're big, but we still we still run on a pretty lean budget, right? Yeah. Like, and we can't afford to hire more people all the time. Like, is is the is the mechanical answer to that? 
Um, yeah, it's like an uh, airliner, right? Uh, we don't want to grow too fast, or else. Well, it's we not even that, man. I mean, if I could hire like twenty more people tomorrow, I'd totally freaking do it. You Absolutely. said a train, man. Um, Whatever, I can be. Airliners a don't grow, though. Here's the here's here's our metric. Um, unless it's a hot air balloon. <laughs> like for for the paid staff versus you know the volunteers, I mean, the paid staff. Is gone. <laughs> What's going on? Um, <laughs> All right, so for the paid staff, the, the guideline is like, is it both sort of boring and tedious and requires a lot of time to work on? Okay, that's something for the office staff. Is it sort of fun and interesting and you can like swing this big magfest sword at it? Cool, yeah, that's where the department heads. And like we try to sort of delegate the tasks out that way. Um, and it, it sort of, the, the office has been like, it grew very organically. It was kind of like, oh my God, we need a full timer. We are dying. All yeah. right, there's the we, first full-time. We didn't hire Dom until we had to. Dom was the first person we hired full-time. Yep. And me and Dom were the people running a MAGFest at the time, and we argued about it for two years before we finally hired him. Um, and the sort of top-down, uh, more philosophical answer to your question really is uh, we're generally a year or so behind where we need to be, and we pull it off with miracles and, and, and burnout and... You know how that goes. Uh, so right now we have, you know, five, six for the moment full-time employees. That's about where we should have been a year or two ago. And a year or two from now, we'll finally have caught up to where we should be right now. And that's just, that is the unfortunate truth of it. And when we compare ourselves to other organizations and we look at things like uh, some of my, our best reference points that we were, we were actually studying recently is Oticon, which is one of the biggest sort of similar conventions in this area, They're and Burning Man, which is one that we compare ourselves to on a sort of philosophical level. Um, uh, Oticon's a whole different story. They are strictly nonprofit, and they're very proud of the fact that they don't employ anybody. But they do that by kind of faking it a little bit, and it's, it's complicated. Burning Man is, I think, three times our size, population-wise. It's like 60,000, uh, yeah. They charge $500 to attend, and they have 80 full-time employees. So if, if you sort of do that math and just cut that in the third for us, like, we are so far behind where they are. Yep. Yeah. So okay. anyway, yep. we had one more back there. <laughs> Do Charles Lore. Actually, that would be Charles Lore. I'm he pretty is, sure. I'm pretty is. sure it's on GitHub now. It's not. What? What? Oh. Uh, didn't Charles do a panel about the badge? He I think did he it did. yesterday. Yeah, or this yeah you missed the at panel, unfortunately. It was at 1 a.m. It's a uh, us. It's so it's it's it was. It was. I made a thing. It Wait, was, hang on. We have some information like in the back here. Before. Hold on. What, Sorry. What's the info? Mark, okay, you should cool. just come up here. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna run because you know people are pinging me and it's 11:30 now. Yeah, nice. Uh, cool. But, uh, you know, we can wrap up and, and, and proper wrap up. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Bye, everybody. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. You guys rock.